Great. So good afternoon, folks, and thank you for joining. We'll give it another minute and then we'll jump right in. And feel free to write in the chat and say hi. You can click um, the drop down so it goes to all panelists and attendees if you want to say who, who you are, where you're joining from, what your industry is, feel free to do that in the chat if you would like. Give it 30 more seconds. Awesome. See some folks joining. Hey, Aileen. Okay, so I think we'll, we'll get started. So I, without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, the folks from CTPTAC, the Connecticut Supplier Diversity, or the Connecticut uh, Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Mm -hmm. That's correct, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Woo and here's Marisol and Frank. So please take it away. Well, thank you, and I'm glad to be able to come back again and um, share the services that we offer at Connecticut PTAC with the Bridgeport um, uh, Regional. And um, I think last time we were actually in person, so this is it's a different world now, and we've continued to um, move forward accordingly. Um, thank you again uh, to my uh, business uh, development manager, Mayor Zahler, for coordinating um, the effort uh, with Connecticut PTAC. Uh, my name is Frank Dixon and I am the state director for the Connecticut per Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Um, and we are a dual funded organization, uh, primary funds from the Department of Defense and with some matching funds for, with the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development. Um, the, our host, is the Southeastern Connecticut Enterprise Region, uh, our sector, uh, located up in Groton, Connecticut. Um, and we offer technical assistance to business interested in selling uh, to the federal, state, and local governments. Uh, we also help you know, our Connecticut business population compete uh, in the government marketplace in various aspects that we'll talk about a little bit uh, at the next slide. Where are we located? Connecticut PTAC, we have five locations around the state of Connecticut. Our, our home office is in Groton, uh, Hartford office. We're co-located with the Metro Hartford Alliance. Uh, East Hartford, we're co-located with the Connecticut Center for Advanced Technologies, Rocky Hill, Connecticut Veterans Administration, and in Milford uh, at the uh, Milford City uh, Government Center building with the Department of Economic Development there in Milford, Connecticut. Uh, before we get started, I, I would want to invite everyone to visit our website, you know, after we finish today's webinar, and you can see some of the services that I'm going to be discussing in more detail. Um, you know, when you, I know I mentioned that we work with uh, Connecticut businesses, but we, we look at seasoned businesses. Uh, some of our minimum requirements, uh, we want you to be in, headquartered in Connecticut. Uh, we want you to you be a seasoned business, you know, with, with certain technical aptitude and past performance history. Um, and we uh, require that you have the technical uh, features, your, your email and uh, other uh, virtual aspects to do business in the new and upcoming uh, government space. Our agenda for today, we're gonna to talk about some of the the higher end Connecticut PTAC services, talk about some of our set aside programs, you know, where we focus on uh, social economic um, qualifications and certifications. And we'll talk about the state of Connecticut a supplier diversity program uh, that might apply, that will apply to some of the smaller businesses in the state.
What do we offer at PTAC as we focus on helping you as a business owner solve the puzzle in government contracting? We help you in some of our initial services determine your suitability for government contracting. We evaluate the necessary registrations that you'll need to be able to do that in the federal, state, and local level. Uh, what social economic eligibility uh, certifications do you qualify for, like your women or veterans or social disadvantage, social economic disadvantage? We help you uh, research procurement histories uh, for the various agencies and entities to help you make smart uh, purchasing and procurement decisions on where to, um, you know, put your resources to be able to do that. Help you identify relevant bids that associated with your goods and services across the various public sector market, please. Uh, proposal preparations with the federal and state and local government, understanding the solicitations, understanding uh, what their requirements are, understanding if you have the capacity and capability to be able to go after those work. And even after award win, we work with you on that. That's a part of the one-on-one -on -one counseling that we do, providing that technical assistance. From a marketing standpoint, we help you put together a government friendly capability statement uh, to be able to market yourself um, efficiently and effectively and work with you with created bid match system where our internal algorithm uh, will uh, research and find the opportunities that best fit your, your procurement needs with the geographic footprint to include that. So determine suitability for government contracting, right? Are you ready to do business with the government, right? We wanna evaluate um, you know, in the government, the government, commercial and private sector, right? We wanna make sure that you understand, have you demonstrated the past performance to make those contracting officers and decision makers comfortable with when they wanna, you know, who, determining who they wanna administer a contract to and making sure you have the financial foundation. Do you have that diverse revenue to be able to uh, go into that space, because at the end of the day, you know it could be a net forty-five uh, or, or above on when you get paid and some of the upfront investment you might need to make to do that. Some of our registrations and certifications on the federal and state level. When we're talking about federal government, we can't do anything with the federal government from a marketing, from a registration or a procurement standpoint, uh, unless you are registered in the system of awards management. And in the system of awards management, you will receive a cage code, your, your commercial and government entity code, which is associated with your business, with your DUNS number, with your address. So it's very important to be able to do business in the federal space. You cannot do that without being registered in the system or awards management. We help you look at the service uh, disabled veteran owned uh, small business certification and your veteran owned small business certification. Help you understand the eligibility, the requirements, uh, the need. You know, we, we go through um, what documents you'll need, what eligibility you fall under. Also the SBA 8A uh, business development program. That's your social economic disadvantage program with the 8A. Um, when we work with you, not only with the 8A, but with women-owned, economically disadvantaged women-owned company, uh, where all of these, and you're historically under, underutilized business zone, where some of the uh, uh, certifications and registrations will need uh, certain criteria from the woman and the veteran and the owner. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. As we move over into the state of Connecticut, state of Connecticut under their um, under the um, you know, Connecticut um, Department of Administrative Services, have your small and minority business enterprise certification uh, registration. We assist with those things. And your Connecticut disadvantaged business enterprise with the Department of Transportation in Connecticut. Uh, and with the Connecticut veteran-owned micro business uh, certification uh, to, to that degree. You have the Connecticut-owned micro business cert and you have the federal, and we help businesses understand the, the, the difference where you might be eligible for one um, and, and not for the other one. We help you understand those things as it relates to any registration certifications, right? Some of our 
and th this is just an overview of some of the uh, logos for your socioeconomic eligibility with your 8A, your woman-owned hub zone uh, certifications. And with the federal, with the Small Business Administration, they centralized all the registration databases uh, at certify.sba.gov. And at any given point, you know, our Connecticut PTAC counselors and procurement specialists are here to help you navigate through the registrations and eligibility requirements to make it a little bit you know, seamless for you, a little bit easier. And, and that's one of our core uh, functionalities. Let's look at who qualifies for some of the socioeconomic eligibility requirements. As you can see from the screen, uh, you will, the, a common theme for um, mostly all of the socioeconomic certifications is you must be, the, the person with the eligibility must be at least 51% owner of the company. And for the most part, run the day-to-day -day operations and control it and not owned by another entity. Those things are pretty much common with the various uh, socioeconomic certifications. Um, and you know, when it comes to your hub zone, um, that requires not only your business being physically located in the hub zone, but a certain percentage of your employees living in a hub zone, uh, but not necessarily in the hub zone where the business is located. And we help uh, our businesses understand that piece of it. And sometimes um, it, you'll get distracted and think because I own it, I'm located here, um, those things that you're eligible and you're not. When you look at your woman-owned and economically disadvantaged woman-owned, uh, we often assist businesses, uh, businesses owned by uh, women, and they automatically assume that, well, I own the business, I'm a, I, I run the day-to-day, -day, um, so I'm, I should be eligible for women-owned small and economically disadvantaged women-owned small. But what we also educate those businesses on is that you have the Small Business Administration have identified North American Industry Classification System codes or NAICS codes that says these specific industry are, are the ones that are eligible for these certifications. Um, some where you take one business owned by a woman might be eligible and another one might not be. And we help you understand what those, um, those qualifications are as far as NAICS codes. We often get businesses that will come in and will not have the appropriate NAICS codes in their system of awards management. And after talking to the business and evaluating them, uh, we do find um, uh, business uh, NAICS codes of services that they actually perform that will make them eligible. So those are the advantages of uh, you know becoming a PTAC client. We sit down and give you that one-on-one -on -one counseling to make sure that you're efficiently and effectively set up appropriately to take advantage of any of the offered uh, certifications that are out there when it comes to going after uh, any government contracts. We also spoke about how do we help our clients research procurement histories and wh why is that important, right? Because you want to know which entities or, or major contractors are buying your products and services or buying a majority of products and services. You know, how much are they buying? Who, who are your competitors, right? What contracts are set to expire? And when you understand where to go and find this particular data, how to Pareto this data efficiently, it will help you make smart procurement choices. Uh, when it comes to manufacturing or production, you might want to you know, make product A over product B, depending on you know, the expectations and spending of that government entity. Also, it, we can help you find out which of your competitors are winning. You know, and, and then that way we it, it assists us to help you figure out who to market yourself to when you want to move forward in, in that capacity. Bid and proposals. You know, again, you know, we help you identify you know, bid opportunities that fit between into your capabilities and capacity. Uh, we bid matching in our computerized program 
where we put in your keywords, your NAICS codes, and it goes out and it searches uh, opportunities uh, based on those uh, industry codes and keywords and the geographic footprint that we put in there. We can uh, set the algorithm to either search in Connecticut, New England, the Northeast, or anywhere internationally. And that's and those that algorithm goes into the various state databases, the municipalities if they're posted, and the relevant government databases where these solicitations are listed and posted. Uh, proposal preparation. Uh, we give you that one-on-one -on -one hands-on proposal preparation in our contracts administration portal, help you review the statement of work, your pricing model, the particular ask and formation of the proposal, the proposal type uh, when it comes to those things. Is it a source of salt? Is it a solicitation? Uh, when are the appropriate due dates? How do you submit it? Um, and, and that's in the beginning and in the, in the middle. And even if you win the award, we offer these services to review your requirements because at the end of the day, that's where you really want to understand the expectations and the deliverables and the regulations and policies to ensure that you're in compliance uh, when delivering on that award. And again, uh, when you're identifying uh, you know, your various uh, opportunities, we look at betasam.gov for it's not betasam.gov anymore. The beta has since merged and everything now is sam.gov and that happened a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and that being said, we, we offer various webinars and trainings when the government updates their databases and systems to help you be able to maneuver through any changes that are available. Um, we have the state of Connecticut contracting portal. Uh, we help you, you understand how to make smart and efficient searches to find those opportunities. Um, we've had clients who would do particular searches and not understand that because that's what you're calling your service. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what the government, it's, it's the keywords that the government have for your search. So we help you broaden your perspective on how to efficiently find the opportunities. To, how are they listening and how are they posting it? You might think you fix uh, sidewalks, but in the government database, they might say they're looking for a concrete uh, services. So you want to make sure that what you're searching for uh, is appropriate. There's also um, a, a particular website that uh, where you can go and have all the 50 states combine and find their procurement and purchasing people. It's called naspo.org, the National Association uh, you know, of Procurement. Uh, officials. And that website is a great website to go to. You can click on any state, find their purchasing uh, contacts, their procurement contacts, um, how to do business with that state, any registration requirements, their forecasts and expectations, because there are a lot of businesses who do business in other states and don't really understand or quite understand, you know, the, 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 the deliverables and details of doing that. All right. We did talk about the, the marketing aspect piece of doing business in the government space or in a prime sector space. And what we have here is what we call a government friendly capability statement. And why, is, why do we call it a government friendly capability statement? A lot of companies have a capability statement as a simple overview or general overview of their business deliverables, um, location, and, and certifications. What we do is we help you put together and we offer templates free of use. Um, we help you put together a, a measurable, accountable capability statement that simply identifies your core competencies, the differentiators that make you, uh, that, that might help identify or put shed a light on some of the um, uh, um, more detailed aspects of your of your business, some of your accomplishments, um, some of your uh, customer associations, some of your awards. Uh, we also look at the past performance, uh, a simple who you've done business with, what do you do, what dates, point of contacts, and then your company data. Uh, you know, 
any social economic certifications, your NAICS codes, your CAGE codes, your DUNS number. Um, it's, it's very deta it's detailed and measurable. Um, and where some of your commercial capability statements maybe have a lot of fluff, you know, i.e. the words, the greatest engineering firm in Connecticut. You know, we're on a government friendly capability statement. We're gonna make you put those words a little bit more measurably, you know, identified as top engineering company in uh, the state of Connecticut, small business administration, or uh, engineering engineers are all such and such certified. So we make sure that it's measurable. So when you're using this to market yourself um, and do a partnership research, um, it'll be clean, simple, and, and, and easy to read. And this is a preferred format by the federal government. The state of Connecticut supplier diversity program, what are the eligibility requirements for that? And why is it important? Because you can always go out the general contracts, but most states and federal governments, they all have small business set asides to ensure that the small business or uh, social disadvantaged businesses uh, really get a chance at going after some of the business opportunities. In the state of Connecticut, uh, you can go after your small, uh, small slash minority business uh, certification. And we look at the various uh, qualifications. To be a small business certified, you need to be headquartered in Connecticut. Gross revenues cannot exceed $20, 000, $20 million. Um, and it must be independent, uh, must, not, must not depend on another person, meaning no one can own you. The business owner uh, you know, must be self-contained. And on the minority business enterprise side, you know, all the criteria of the small business certification, they want you to be 51% owned and managed and controlled by that person, uh, must exercise the daily affairs of the business, meaning you run the day-to-day -day business operations, right? And you must have the power to direct the policies and receive the benefits interests of the business, meaning you are uh, the majority owner and controller, right? And you must provide the expertise and background of that business. And that falls into a gender uh, and ethnicity base as well when it comes to the, the uh, qualifications. And at any time, Connecticut PTAC can help you read through the Department of Administrative Services uh, Supplier Diversity Program quality, uh, qualifications and help you register appropriately. And this is um, an, the explanation of how to go into the portal, right? You, you like all um, uh, portals, you wanna create your account and you wanna have to upload various documents um, and, and move forward accordingly from there, all right? They have the state of Connecticut, and I think we're gonna see a little bit later, is updating some of their, um, their, their, their website faces, you know, where you might have CT, CT source and, and things of that nature that um, are transitioning from some of their old platforms uh, into a more consolidated platforms. And a lot of federal and state agencies are doing that. Where they used to have five and six different websites, a lot of them are, are, are consolidating websites under one umbrella. Let's talk about the Connecticut Veteran-Owned Microbusiness Certification, right? And here's a, a good um, um, uh, overview and how to go about doing that and, and eligibility requirements. Um, you know, you do want your DD-214. Um, you wanna be able to provide you know, current registration of business ownership, provide documentation, establishing the percentage um, that the veteran um, has and provide, you know, proof of annual gross income. So all these things, um, you know, the procurement counselors can easily sit down and work with our strategic partners with the Connecticut Department of Veteran Affairs to be able to manage any veterans that might qualify for this. And I want to reiterate to anyone, to everyone on the call today, any um, certifications that you are eligible for, we strongly advise you to take advantage of it because it would only give you an additional uh, leg up to be able to go after those um, state and federal opportunities. 
And here's a, um, we're looking at now the Department of Transportation website for their, um, uh, for their social disadvantaged um, uh, certification. Um, it's always good to, to, to understand the eligibility requirements before you take a leap into it and put the time and effort into it and ensure that you are socially and economically um, uh, qualified for that. And PTACs are here to assist you to do that when you when you want to go to Department of Transportation's website to to to, um, to take on that opportunity. And as I mentioned, you know, you have the CT Source is the vendor portal, you know, for registration. Um, and you want to go there to create your username, password, and it will allow you to um, have that one uh, source for your business registrations any uh, socioeconomic registrations, um, licensing certifications and opportunities as well. So um, again, I, I know I sort of went through this um, fast, but hopefully you, you got through it. And we all we always advise our um, clients. Uh, Marisol, if you can go just go back one to the website information. Um, you can always visit our website at any time at ctptac.org to view all of our services, or you can reach out to us directly. Um, and, and we invite you to follow us on our Facebook and uh, LinkedIn pages at CTPTAC for any updates of training webinars, uh, our newsletter, and anything government in the federal or state of Connecticut or municipalities uh, to make sure that you're 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 in the loop on um, on the public sector opportunities. Um, again, I, I, I mentioned that we do weekly uh, webinar and and workshops. Uh, pre pandemic, uh, we would you know be in person across the state um, doing these webinars and trainings, but but now they're virtual. Um, we do them at 11 o'clock uh, every Tuesday. Um, and you can visit our website at any given time under our ctptech.org training and events where our clients have access to old webinars. They can go back and refresh themselves. We wanna let you know about our upcoming webinars. And we have a big one coming up um, June 22nd. I think that's next week. It's gonna be, we have procurement and purchasing um, uh, point of contacts from the various municipalities in New Haven County. Um, and that'll be a, key, a presentation and Q&A for any businesses looking to do, any vendors looking to do business with municipalities. And if we get into July, we have the General Service Administration uh, Regional Manager that we're talking about getting on some of the blanket order or um, open quantity type um, uh, procurement platforms offered by the federal government. So again, please feel free to visit our website and reach out and get a more detailed one-on-one -on -one, uh, overview of our services at any time by visiting us at ctptac.org. Um, so um, I think I will open it up for any questions that we might have um, uh, to this point. Uh, Marisol, I think I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, and while we invite everyone to send any questions, um, please do so. I'm just going to um, just share some information about doing business within the government space. Uh, I just want to remind everyone, the government is the largest buyer in the world. Last year alone, they spent over $500 billion buying from small businesses, and they buy just about every commodity from every industry. So please keep that in mind. Um, participating in this webinar is just going to help build your government acumen and Connecticut PTAC services are free of cost. And we aim to help our Connecticut businesses get one step closer to winning government contracts at every level, federal, state, at the municipal level, as well as with federal prime contractors they are obligated to parse out parts of their award to small businesses as well. And we help you do that and how to do that. So um, while you're thinking about questions, perhaps please keep that in mind. The government can be one of your best customers because they are never going to go out of business and they have a huge budget. And it's just a matter of learning how to do business with them. And if you want a resource that's going to be objective, 
credible, please reach out to Connecticut PTAC. Thank you for that, Mayor Saul. And I, and, and I do want to, um, you know, simply state to our attendees and our, and our gracious hosts, our businesses in 2020, Connecticut clients, the Connecticut PTAC clients, uh, won um, in excess of $286 million in federal, state, and local contracts and subcontract awards. And that's huge. And what does that equate to? $16.5 million in tax revenue to the state of Connecticut and close to 6,000 jobs um, gained or retained. So that, you know, Connecticut PTAC contribution to our client base, assisting them to be able to go after the open awards and contracts and helping them make those smart decisions. Also, I know we talked a lot about winning direct contracts, but we also help the business understand how to become an efficient and profitable subcontractor as well. You know, acting as that liaison to your prime contractors and assisting you understand how to talk to them, how to get in contact with the appropriate people, points of contacts in your Sikorsky's, your Pratt Whitney's, your electric boats, your L3s, things of that nature. We, we also work in that capacity as we not only work with small businesses, we work with all businesses to help them understand the government marketplace. And I just wanna add that the, the, the opportunities are really infinite once you start being in that government marketplace because it's not all about RFPs and solicitations. There are other opportunities that are much smaller in um, dollar threshold. For example, we have the government has a simplified acquisition procedures uh, approach, which is a keep it simple type of approach for businesses where these opportunities, the dollar threshold is between $3,500 to $250,000. And what makes these opportunities so special is that these don't get posted on, on SAM.gov. These opportunities are um, the contracting officer at their discretion has the opportunity to award this contract to a small business based on what they know about that small business business and that business's past performance. So these types of opportunities have no competition, requires a lot less paperwork. There's a lot less risk involved. The turnaround is faster. And most importantly, you're building relationships with government contracting officers. And we help you do the market research to find who is buying through the simplified acquisition procedures method. And knowing that you'll, you'll be able to reach out and introduce your company to that federal agency to let them know you're interested in these opportunities. And, but that you have to let them know that you're there, you're available, you're, you can provide these products and services. But if you don't do that, they're very limited in who they can award these, these contracts to directly to. I, I would also want to, um you know state to any to all our attendees today that connecticut ptac is like marisol said a trusted source in the state um by you know not only um you know our, our politicians our prime contractors but a lot of the associations um, and we'll have major clients reach out major prime contractors reach out to us with opportunities and say you know, who in your client database, you know, are, are eligible for these particular opportunities because they know our client base is educated, certified, registered, and they know that they have the support of Connecticut PTAC to assist them understand, you know, how to do business at that next level. So we want to make sure that people understand the full uh, capacity of having a Connecticut PTAC or a PTAC in your state and it's a no cost service. I just wanna jump in here and say thank you so much for the presentation and for all this additional information. Um, folks listening, if you do wanna ask a question, feel free to write it in the chat. Um, you can also raise your hand. There's the ability where you can, um, you can talk as well if you wanna, you wanna just chat with us and ask your question vocally. Um, so feel free to jump, jump in and, and ask any questions you may have whether it's about your industry or, or, or getting started. Um, we do appreciate uh, Frank and Marisol for being here today and sharing this wonderful service with us. 
um, I think that's amazing that um, $286 million worth of contracts was awarded last year. Um, and they could be small, they could be big um, subcontracting. It's, it's, there's a lot of opportunities. So um, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Thank you. All right. You're welcome, Eileen. Thank you. And anyone feel free to um, reach out directly, look at their website. Um, I'm sure uh, if you have any questions, there's, it's, there's a ton of information there. Um, so I think, I think that might be it. <laughs> Thank you. So folks, um, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much, Marisol and Frank, for, for putting this on for us. And um, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks, Thank Kate. you. And I look forward to doing this in person next time. Yes, <laughs> Hopefully. That sounds lovely. That All would right, be great. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.